call the October 25th, 2018 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District trustees to order. A roll call, Judith Cavallero. Present. Aubrey Strauss. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Nick Rico. Here. I'm Charles Anderson, and Joe Carroll will be late due to a work conflict. Uh, <coughs> approval of the minutes of the September 27th, 2018 regular meeting. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any uh, corrections or errors or remissions to note? Nick. Um, I would say page two. Section F, second line, third sentence. His only comment, there is an I instead of a T at the end of comment, unless it's a different font. No, nope, it's, right, it's right on it's my right, sheet. It's right on the sheet. I think it's uh, uh, the printing. It oh, says, it's a T? Yeah. yeah. See? Really? Yeah. No, I... Not on my page. For some reason, I'm not on Nick, you want these? No, thanks. I got my own. Okay, additional ones? Oh, all right. Well, on page seven, under record plans, the motion by Mr. Greenleaf, seconded by Ms. Cavallaro, and it's spelled Cavallaro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even get that. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. That's it. Audrey. Page six, very top of the page, talking about E1 pumps. It's minor, but they're actually, it's the letter E and then the word one written out, E-O-N-E, -E, with a capital O. Okay. Is that it? All those in favor of approval as corrected. Six in favor, none opposed. Okay, superintendent's operations report. A uh, copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of September is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.21 million gallons per day. Effluent quality was uh, well within our permitted limits with 95 and 96% removals for BOD and TSS with concentrations of 14 milligrams per liter. Uh, copy of the pump station flow is included in your packet. We had some erroneous uh, flow data, as I noted on the spreadsheet. Um, they were all uh, identifiable either through uh, due to uh, plug um, power failures causing hiccups in the, the uh, programming or um, uh, a plugged pump and also you can see the night we did the force main relocation uh, there was um, more flow at pump station 5 as a result of that. Um, we have hired, uh, we have completed our search for a new uh, collection system labor slash, slash operator. Uh, we've hired a gentleman by the name of John Machelski, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to him starting on the 29th. Um, uh, due to some culvert work the town was doing on Route 114, uh, the town uh, required that the district relocate our force main. As I noted at the last meeting, this work was not anticipated nor budgeted. Um, Overall, the cost to complete this work was approximately $40,000. I've included some pictures of this work in your packet so you could see the extent of it. Uh, it uh, as I had mentioned previously, the work, uh, uh, the planning, the pre-planning really resulted in a very smooth operation. Um, and everything went very, very well on, the, on that line. Uh, we had the maple tree that, that was in front of the admin uh, building uh, blew down during the last uh, series of heavy winds. Um, so we've got a big gap there now that we'll address come springtime. And just a reminder, there is a budget workshop at the next trustee, before the next trustees meeting. 
um, on the 15th of November. This is the one of the cycles that we have uh, three weeks. Uh, we move the, the meeting up one one week because of the Thanksgiving holiday. So the next meeting's on the 15th, and prior to that meeting at 6 p.m., we'll have a budget, budget workshop. Will that be here or at the district? It's scheduled to be here right now. Yes, I was checking on it today. There's a school board meeting scheduled in this room, so we might be in in B. So I was wondering if you wanted it there or town managers. Thank you. And just on a side note, I provide you a, with a flyer that I recently got um, for some training that's uh, being offered for trustees. If you'd like to attend, let me know, and I'll get you signed up for that. And with that, that's all that I have under the report. Yeah, I think I'd just make a note. Um, I think on this FOAA training, um, there's also uh, online training that will be available to us. Usually the town clerk sends a notice to all the elected officials about the requirement to receive this training. But there is, a, there is an online course that will be taken. Um, so you don't really have to go to a remote located seminar somewhere. Um, thanks, David. Uh, correspondence. Uh, were, there, were there any questions? I didn't see any. Okay. Questions for the superintendent? Uh, correspondence. Uh, Vincent Bombacci uh, uh, emailed with regard to the Higgins Beach area. He had inquired about the district's plan to protect the infrastructure within Higgins Beach. As noted in my response, the, uh, the infrastructure is currently constructed with that in mind and that the district will just continue and monitor and react accordingly. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep a note note on any issues that we have out there. But uh, right now, all our infrastructure is quite deep uh, and protected that way. And then the pump stations and the generator that runs the pump station are, are elevated and have uh, are protected from flooding in that, that aspect. He also had emailed uh, me with regards to Scarborough Downs and asked if the infrastructure uh, the district's infrastructure was able to accommodate the additional wastewater flow from the proposed Scarborough Downs development, and if not, who was going to pay for the needed improvements? In my response, I explained the capacity re reserve fee uh, and that the, any needed improvements would be paid by, for by the developer. Uh, I have a correspondence. Questions? Okay. Old business, Pine Point odor abatement. Uh, we've received the uh, controls for the Eco 2 system and car will be installing them shortly. And uh, we are also having to build a wall <coughs> between the oxygen tank and the diesel fuel tank that uh, we've already uh, get the contractor lined up to do, though. Uh, I think it was actually supposed to be done by Friday of this week. Uh, and we continue with our hydrogen sulfide monitoring program in the Pine Point area. Uh, overall, we have seen a noted drop in the hydrogen sulfide concentrations as the temperature has started to cool. Um, and it's good to note that, uh, happy to note that we have not received any odor complaints uh, uh, from the Pine Point area. So, this year. Uh, just by way of further explanation, um, the uh, the changes at the odor abatement um, component of the pump station mm -hmm. were due to some changes that were made uh, based on recommendations from the uh, vendors for the, uh, for the tanks. For the oxygen tank. Yeah. Originally, they uh, had told us that we would be using these, and I call them bottles, but they're like uh, s the small, small cylinders. Small cylinders. And uh, once they started looking into it, the delivery rate was high enough that they were concerned with freezing of the oxygen. And so they wanted a larger tank, very similar to how propane tanks operate. Mm -hmm. So that's what necessitated these, yep. uh, these, other, these other changes. Yep. Okay. Um, other questions for the superintendent? I just yeah. had one. It's, I think I asked this the last, last time we got this table. What, for the peak rate, what's the, what, what numbers should we be, be concerned if it's above? 
Um, well, trying to remember what the number if for entry is. Do you happen to read? I don't even remember. I Googled it last time, and I'll Google it again. For yeah. <laughs> Super low. For confined space entry, what the average concentration that, that it's measuring that the alarms go off at, I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head because it's pre-programmed into meters. Um, so maybe you could put just the next time you give us this table, put the, uh, uh, the trigger peak, peak rates. Um, okay. So um, I think what I'd like to take the opportunity just to commend uh, the superintendent and our staff for aggressively responding to the order issue down there. We still are completing the permanent changes at the pump station. Um, but I think compared to a year ago, uh, the problem has been greatly abated. I won't say it's been totally eliminated, but um, I think we had practically zero complaints on odor that were so There were complaints for odors, but they weren't related to us. Um, and so I know we've put a lot of time and energy into being sure that we could control the, the issues down there, and I just wanted to take a minute just to commend the superintendent and the staff for the efforts that they put in to deal with this problem because it, it could have been a thorny problem, especially with the delays we had in the completion of the improvements at uh, pump station number one. So um, thanks, Dave, for, for doing that and staying on top of this all through the season. Well, the answer to the question, by the way, so you can start to detect the smell at 0.13 ppm, which is the same as milligram per liter. Everybody can smell it at one, and by the time it's up to 30 parts per million, it has the rotten egg smell. So that's not the confined space entry number, but it's <coughs> at what point you would notice it or it would become an, an, an annoyance. And parts per million is the same as milligrams per liter? Yeah. Yes. In this case, yeah. yeah. Uh, not an air. It's a different measurement in air. Sorry. Milligrams per liter is a liquid concentration. PPM, I think in air it's um, something per kilogram or it's it's a it's a, diff it's a different different entity. But it's parts per million, essentially. Yeah. It's the, I think that's an equivalent measure. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, uh, under new business, um, we have two items listed on the agenda for new business, and we've had a request um, through the superintendent to add an additional item under new business. So that would require a motion to suspend the rules and add item C, phase five, Eastern Village, uh, to the agenda. And that would require five affirmative votes to suspend the rules and pass. So the motion would be to suspend the rules and add phase five Eastern Village to the agenda under new business. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? No discussion. Um, all in favor? None opposed. Six zero. Thank you. Okay, under new business, Dunstan Crossing, phase four amendment. Uh, Chamberlain Homes uh, requests to add one residential unit to phase four of the Dunstan Crossing subdivision. Uh, the boundary line for phase four fell within the middle of a proposed duplex condo located at 145 slash 147 Stewart Drive. Uh, phase four was originally approved in October 27th, 2016, and a copy of that approval is attached. The approval was for 12 single family homes and 22 condo units, um, which were 11 duplexes. They are now seeking approval for 11 single family house lots and 24 uh, condo units uh, for 12 duplexes for a net increase of one residential unit. Um, I recommend approval with the following conditions. The subject, uh, subject to a capacity reserve fee for one single family 
residential dwelling unit, uh, the capacity reserve fee due is $3,251.18. Again, that's adjusted monthly based on the ENR construction cost index, and the fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. And then uh, provide a revised uh, phasing plan showing the changes um, to the phasing. So this would not change the subdivision plan no. except for the phasing delineation. So there's no lot line changes. No. Uh, is there a motion to approve as recommended? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, I'm discussion. I'm going to myself on this one. I, I think that he, he does most of his business with the company I work for now. So. Okay. Uh, All right. Without objection to avoid apparent conflict of interest. Um, Yes, okay, so we have a motion in a second. Questions on this, the superintendent? All those in favor? None opposed, five to zero, one abstention. Okay. Um, item B is the budget summary. Uh, the nine a month budget summary is included in packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions for the superintendent on the budget summary? Chairman, uh, I had a question about the electrical line item. Okay. Are we, away. are we still well below what we should be getting charged for? Yes, we are. Uh, okay. Our bill, I think our last bill was, what, $499? Something like that. Right. The, the reason I ask is at the very bottom, we are on target at 75% of the year complete, mm -hmm. and we're 75% of the year spent. Would we be at a higher run rate than the average budget month if the electrical costs were on target? Uh, obviously, we'd be a little more percentage-wise above it. Um, I did do that calculation. I looked at that. I've been looking at that. We've had some um, additional unbudgeted items. Uh, we had the the forty thousand dollars in the mm -hmm. uh, Route One Fourteen project, right. and then two fifteen thousand dollars sewer relocations, in addition to the bu the budgeted items. So I think and timing of other items that have taken place. Yeah, kind of. Like Shifts the insurance and, payments yeah, and yeah. bond payments so and all that. Overall, um, I'll have a better uh, analysis of it uh, come the budget workshop okay. because I'm going to have uh, future expenditures all lined up and um, I'll have that detail uh, better yeah. better ironed out for you. But in general, I think we're still going to be on target. Budget. Good. And um, just as a follow up question, where in the budget did you place the Unbudgeted items like the 40k for the 114. That would have got under contractual. Thank you. Yeah. So by my by my look, we're slightly over budget uh, uh, operating funds based on the additional expenses that the superintendent just outlined. We're about 140 thousand under in the electrical account. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing by year end, even including these additional expenses, that will come out pretty much on budget based on how things are tracking. But as David said, he's working on it. But I, I think we're in, I think we're in good shape in spite of those mm -hmm. unanticipated items that came up. And if necessary, we could transfer some money from a reserve account to cover any, any shortage. But I don't think it'll be significant. Other questions or comments? Thank you. Okay. Did we vote? No. All those in favor? None opposed. Six zero. Okay, item C under new business, phase five, Eastern Village. David. Um, Valentine Development uh, requested district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the 10 lots for phase five of Eastern Village subdivision. 
uh, subdivision lots number 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Previously, the district had approved phases 1, 2, 2A, 2B, 3, 3A, 3B, and 4 of this project. Uh, the proposed sewer extension will include approximately 718 feet of 8 inch diameter gravity sewer and 5 manholes. The sewer, located within, the sewer is located within the public right of way and will become district uh, property uh, once the roadway is changed, uh, uh, turned over. Uh, I recommend approval with the uh, following conditions. The project is within the original sewer service area. The original lot had an allocation of, for 52 residential dwelling units, which was has been allocated to the previous phases. Consequently, all 10 lots are subject to the capacity reserve fee. This fee is based on uh, single family residential dwelling units without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals in capacity reserve fees. Um, the current capacity reserve fee per home is $3,251.18 and is adjusted based on the ENR construction cost index and based on this uh, the total fee due for the 10 dwelling units is $32,511.80. Copy of the recorded subdivision plan depicted the amended, uh, the amended district approval shall be provided to the district in both paper and electronic format. All sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape um, and tracer wire installed adjacent to the sewer. A sewer permit is required for each house. A completed application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. A sewer extension permit is required and, the, and a complete application. And uh, associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit um, is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no sewer work shall be completed. And finally, uh, professionally surveyed, surveyed Electronic geo, uh, geo reference CAD drawings and stamp PDF of the CAD drawing be, uh, be provided to the district for the completion of the project. Is there a motion to approve? Make a motion for approval. Second. Move and second the questions for the superintendent. I think, uh, I think as I asked the superintendent to explain at the beginning, um, there are no additional lots platted out on the subdivision plan. It's just a question of us approving lots that were previously shown on the plan but not approved in the phasing that we approved. So this, I think, is the last phase that we act on in regard to this project. No, there's actually, I believe there's actually, uh, there's others, there's others, other phases okay. still, still moving forward. So, but so as we as we move, then we'll see additional phases come back before us mm -hmm. for additional approval. But those phases are also already shown on the subdivision plans that were Correct. approved by the town. Okay. Nick, a uh, couple questions. Uh, the capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of sewer permits, right? Uh, the 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 sewer extension permit. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm just curious why we're asked to look at it the last minute while I was at it. Is there a timeline that they need to meet for approvals from the town? Is that what it is? Uh, it, this came to, to my, uh, across my desk just on Monday. Um, it was an oversight on the developer's part. Uh -huh. And um, the, and there's a lot that is actively um, being sought after and uh, the old, new owner of the lot it wants to start construction on it mm -hmm. uh, post haste and until we approve it and he can get his sewer permits the town can't issue construction okay permits. just curious thank you any other questions all those in favor none opposed Six to zero. Uh, that's one the agenda, nothing else. Nothing else. Okay. Um, public comments. There are no members of the public here. Trustee comments. Judy. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That was quick. <laughs> I'm waiting for more. Step the other. <laughs> um, I'd like to compliment Nick for filling in for Chairman Anderson last month. He did a great job. He stepped up to the plate, and good job, Nick. Thank you. You're welcome. And I appreciate it also. Thank you. Nick. Uh, kudos to Dave and the crew for the overnight, late night work for the force main relocation on 114. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ben. So we have those pictures. I, I meant to ask a question about the uh, picture number three, which is the color of the black hole. Well, <laughs> is that the actual pipe that was taken out? Yes. It was in the ground, and there was no... No, uh, yeah, the, the pipe looks almost like it went in yesterday. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting because we've had a couple of segments of that pipe that have actually um, broken, been perforated, right. and we had leaks that we had to fix in some sections, and we had concern about the quality of all of the pipe in there. So some of the some of the explanation that we got was uh, particular soil types that. Uh, caused deterioration in the pipe, and uh, others of us felt like there was bad batches of pipe that were manufactured in the year that those pipes were orig originally installed. But it is, um, it is a little bit uh, encouraging to see that we took a piece of pipe out of there um, that was in such great shape. So I, I, very, I very purposely went over and took that, <laughs> inspected that pipe for that reason. Mm -hmm. so. I think the contractor thought it was a little kooky because it was three in the morning. Yeah. <coughs> and it was you. Yeah. Is that Shaw Brothers that replaced that? Yeah. Okay. Kudos to Shaw Brothers and the district. And I just wanted to remind everybody to get out and vote in, in November. That's it. Thank you, um, so I also want to thank Dave and the crew for all their hard work in doing that forest main relocation. At, uh, you know, so much could have gone wrong and didn't, and it's because of the, partially because of the good planning and partially because we just have, we have such a great team. Um, and I also wanted to thank all of the crew members and their families that came out for our employee appreciation dinner last week, and thanks to the staff for setting that up and organizing it and arranging everything. It was a really nice evening, and I, I really enjoy that event every year because it's a nice time to talk with people in a very social setting, so thanks. And at that force main, it, not only were the soils bad, but I did the soil borings for testing that, and it was actually like a, an incinerator ash in some spots. So that's probably contributing to those, those places where it, it did rupture back in the day. Literally hot soils. Literally hot soils, yeah. Okay. Aubrey kind of stole my thunder. I wanted to thank everybody Sorry, for, no, that's all right. I want to thank everybody who came out to the uh, employee dinner. It was a great time, as always. and. Uh, no further comments. Thanks to the group for uh, their hard work down there on 114. Thank you. Uh, also, just wanted to remember to remind folks to vote in the upcoming election. Um, also note that our budget report this month shows the final bond payment on our 2018 bond. And that's a bond that I rewrote when I was with the super when I was the superintendent of the district in 1988. It seems hard to believe that that many years could possibly have gone by since we issued that bond. And I can guarantee you when we wrote it, I had no plans to be anywhere in the area when that <laughs> bond was retired. But time does fly. I'd like to welcome John Machalski, our new employee, and wish him well with the district. Um, also, to remind folks that our next meeting will be November 15th. David covered that in the meeting, but I thought it would be worth hitting that one more time. And that change in our schedule is due to the Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, you know, also, thanks to the staff and to the superintendent for the work on the force main relocation and um, for the work throughout the summer on the odor control down on the Pine Point Road. And with that, I take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? None opposed. We're adjourned. I'm watching the door. I'm watching the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like last meeting. <laughs> hey, guys. What's up?
push this, no, you push this switch down on the back side.